Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, your boy Oruban Kasti Kevinish, back here with another brand new video. I hope you guys are having a great day. So, we are here for the Qatar Grand Prix Sprint Day review. So, Sprint Race and Sprint Qualifying review. Uh, it's quite a long video, so without any further ado, let's get right into the video, guys. So, before the Sprint shootout, uh, there was a revision that was made at the track. Uh, with the turn 12, 13 track limits being moved a bit inwards and purely during the tyre checks at Friday night uh, after qualifying notice somewhere on the tyres that raised some concerns due to the curbs. A new 10 minute track familiarization session was ran before the sprint shootout. It is to be said that if the tyre issue continues the race would mandate a 3 stopper. So now with that being said let's get into the sprint shootout. So starting off with SQ1, well SQ1 knockouts were Stroll, again knocked out in Q1 with a pace gap of 9 tenths to his teammate. I mean seriously it seems like uh, Lance Stroll has lost motivation, nothing more to be said uh, other than that. Next was Albon qualifying P17, ran wide on his final run. It seems like the car has pace to enter Q2 like how we saw yesterday but unfortunately couldn't tie a lap in. Yuki Sonoda qualifies P18 for the sprint, ran wide on the final run again got out qualified by his teammate Liam Lawson the speed and the pace is there to enter Q2 as he did yesterday uh, to qualify P11 for the main race Kevin Magnussen qualifies P19 a bad run of form this weekend for Magnussen continues again uh, getting knocked out and out qualified by his teammate Logan Sargent getting all his lap times deleted qualifies P20 with no representative lap times to his name in sprint qualifying Seriously, how could someone get all his lap times deleted? It's beyond me. As he is fighting to retain his seat for next year, his performance today in the sprint qualifying and in the sprint race is not going to help his case. So now moving on to SQ2. Well, the driver's knockout in SQ2 were Gasly in P11, Lewis in P12, Valtteri in P13, Liam Lawson in P14 and Joe in P15. Gasly seemed to have the pace around this track since we first raced here but after making it into Q3 in the feature race qualifying he's out in SQ2. Lewis had a fantastic qualifying yesterday for the feature race with both the McLaren drivers suffering a lap time deletion for track limits he got P3 but got knocked out in SQ2 after his final lap got deleted. Guess for what? Yep track limits. Valtteri had another fantastic qualifying session here but not as extraordinary as yesterday but nonetheless qualified P13 for the sprint race. Liam Lawson qualifies P14 after his lap time got deleted for track limits I think at turn 5 but even the deleted lap was only good enough for P12. So on the whole a better performance from him in the sprint qualifying compared to yesterday uh, for the main race qualifying. Zhou Guan Yu qualifies P15. I think either he didn't set a lap time or his lap time got deleted as his delta to Lawson was over 20 seconds. So now moving on to SQ3. Well SQ3 was so thrilling to watch as suddenly the cars that seem fast were not able to reproduce the stellar laps with Oscar Piastri topping the charts to take pole for the sprint, followed by his teammate Lando Norris qualifying P2, Verstappen qualifying P3, after his first lap in SQ3 got deleted for track limits, was not able to tie in a lap on his final run to take pole. George Russell takes P4 for the sprint, Ferrari duo of Sainz and Leclerc qualifying P5 and P6, Sainz finally having a better qualifying performance today than yesterday to outqualify his teammate. Charles getting lap times deleted for track limits over and over again managed to qualify right behind his teammate in P6. Nico Hulkenberg as usual pulling out a stellar lap to put himself in P7 for the sprint race start. Perez having a better qualifying though running wide on his final lap ruined his chances of a top 5 spot for the sprint race start considering his lap time on the final run in SQ2. Fernando Alonso qualifying P9, he did put down a lap time that was good enough to get him into P5 but the times were deleted for track limits. Esteban Ocon qualifying P10, rounding off the top 10 for the sprint race after not setting a lap time in SQ3. I mean, the sprint qualifying was just thrilling and unpredictable to watch as drivers' lap times were just getting deleted one after another, with track limits being moved inwards at turn 12 and 13 and the wins at turn 4 and 5 catching drives off guard. Nonetheless, the sprint qualifying was entertaining to watch. It's great to see McLaren having a front row lockout for the first time in years on merit for the sprint race. Honestly, this is what it could have been yesterday for this feature race qualifying if both the drivers had kept the cars within the white lines. It shows that McLaren has the pace around this track. 
Today, the McLaren and Red Bull seem pretty level in terms of pace, at least under one lap. A very contrasting results to yesterday's qualifying, the drivers who had bad qualifying yesterday had a much better one today and likewise, the drivers who had good qualifying yesterday had a very poor one today in the sprint shootout. So now moving on to the sprint race, well, wow, what a sprint race, too many incidents. It was great to see McLaren locking out the front row again, they did great today, very happy for them. Oscar had a better start than his teammate but got quickly swallowed up by all the soft tyre runners. But as the race went on, the soft tyres degraded quickly as the mediums came to life. Oscar, Lando, Max and Lewis did well to cherry pick each of the soft compound runners one after another to climb up the field for Oscar to reclaim the sprint race lead to win the race. Max managed to recover to finish P2 and claimed his third world championship title. So congratulations to Max on that. His pace, consistency, adaptability, pressure endurance and bulletproofness is scarily good that every future aspiring drivers would take notes and inspiration from Max. He's the kind of driver that every top team or team that aspires to get to the top would crave for. GG's to Max. But with once he got up to P2, it seemed like the McLaren and Red Bull were very close in terms of pace that he wasn't able to make a dent on Oscar's lead, like how he used to do in the past. It shows that the race win might not be as sealed off as we thought at the start of this weekend when Max put the car on pole. With Oscar starting only P6, I feel like he still would be able to mount a challenge for the race win with the mid-race safety car intervention and the chaos. Lando had a poor getaway losing position but managed to recover well to finish P3. Honestly, this has not been his weekend, too many errors mistakes robbing him of a better result. Mercedes duo of Russell and Hamilton starting on an opposite strategy with George on the soft compound and Lewis on the mediums. Both managed to finish the sprint race P4 and P5. Mercedes as usual seem to have better pace on the race than under one lap and the mediums seem to work better for the track. So it's clear that no team will be using the soft compound for the race tomorrow unless there is a late safety car with only 10 to 9 laps of sprint to the end, with the medium and hard compound being the preferred tyre choice for tomorrow. With the Ferrari duo finishing P6 and P7, Charles got a post-race penalty for track limits, pushing him down to P12 from P7. Carlos did well to defend his position to finish P6. The Ferraris seem to have the pace, but their car just seems to be too wind sensitive on the fast corners, robbing them of, of a better lap times. I wish Ferrari had gone for a similar strategy to the Mercs and tried to put either one of their drivers on the medium compounds. But I guess uh, getting passed by the Mercs were inevitable as they weren't able to mount a challenge on George who was on the soft compound as well. With Alex Albon who kept his nose clean and had a quiet sprint taking up P7 after Charles' penalty. So two points for Williams after crossing the finish line P8 on track, a brilliant and a consistent race from Alex. With Fernando Alonso taking up the last points paying position to take P8 after crossing the finish line P9 on track a decent damage limitation stint from Alonso. Gasly finishes P9 just outside the points for Alpine starting P11. Valtteri Bottas finishes the race P10, a solid race from him, just kept himself out of troubles with a little battle at the start of the sprint with Hamilton. Yuki finished the race P11, again kept his nose clean, made no mistakes, a clean sprint race from Yuki. Honestly, the amount of times he has finished P11 this year, he must hate the number at this point. Charles, as I said, got demoted to P12 after his penalty for track limits. Kevin Magnussen finishes the race P13, nothing more he could have done considering his pace all through the weekend compared to his teammate. Jogo and Yug finishes the race P14, honestly, considering he pitted for new tyres under the last safety car, I expected for him to be able to get into the top 10. I feel like it's a missed opportunity from his side. Lance Stroll finishes the sprint P15 after the penalty for track limits, last of the runners. After crossing the finish line P13 on track, not a good weekend or maybe not a good run of weekends for him since Austria really. So we had 15 cars cross the finish line, so 5 retirements from the race, split into 3 different incidents causing 3 safety cars in 19 laps. Just process that. Just imagine what could happen tomorrow with Lando, Oscar, Checo, Sainz all starting way out of their position. So the first incident was on lap 1 with Liam Lawson losing the back end uh, of the car riding on the dirty air, beaching himself in the gravel. Then it was Logan Sargent who seemingly spun on his own, again beaching the car on the gravel. 
Then finally, a crash involving three cars of Esteban Ocon, Nico Hulkenberg and Sergio Perez, with Esteban being the instigator of the crash, with both Nico and Sergio being the victim. Esteban's defensive skills are good, but when he gets desperate, it goes a bit over the board. Honestly, I can't help but to write off this incident as a racing incident. But honestly, Sergio was making good progress through the field once his medium tyres started to come good. Nico too had a brilliant race on his hand that probably he could have finished and scored a point of this race with the penalty of Charles Leclerc. But it's unfortunate that he had to retire from the race. So that would be my take and review on the sprint day guys. Sprint qualifying, sprint shootout however you want to call it and the sprint race. Uh, entertaining day on the whole the sprint weekend the sprint has kind of set up a great chaotic race on my head for tomorrow with the high tire wear and chances of crash and safety car deployments tomorrow could be a fun day so let's wait and watch as to what's gonna happen tomorrow with that being said i would like to wrap up this video guys i hope you all enjoyed if you did make sure to hit that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments on what are your thoughts on what happened in the sprint shootout and the sprint race and if you haven't subscribed to the auto Cast youtube channel already make sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell icon and turn on all notifications so you get notified whenever i upload a brand new video it's me your boy auto Cast aka vinesh and i'm out love you guys stay safe peace